Hello everyone. Welcome back to Adams. In part three, we're going to do a lot of things. We're going to continue looking at those chemical symbols and atomic numbers on the periodic table. We're going to also continue talking about isotopes using the atomic and mass numbers to figure out the isotopes. And then we're going to calculate the average atomic mass, that, that number that you see on the periodic table that has the decimal places. We're going to see how they come up with that. So elements are arranged in the periodic table by their atomic number. And they are in a periodic configuration. So they go across as they increase. And so they, they are related that way. They get their mass is larger as you go across that periodic table. But also these columns, which we call groups, anything that's in the same column is going to have similar characteristics. Okay, and so they're represented by the periodic table by their symbol and their atomic number, and then their arrangement tells you kind of how they, um, how their properties are the same. And again, we have your atomic number at the top, your um, symbol, and in this case, you have the name. Some some would have the atomic mass down here. So we mentioned the word isotope earlier, and so I'm going to define that for you because atoms of the same element can have different numbers of neutrons, and that's because that's how it is in nature. Okay, so you could come across isotopes of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. Therefore, they have different mass numbers. Okay, and so the example I've got you here today is uh, neon. And again, remember how we say it, neon 20, it's, it, its number always stays the same, so they're all 10. But what can change is the number of neutrons. And the way we write them with that um, atomic mass on top and the atomic number on the bottom makes it easy for us to do this, 20 minus 10 is 10, 21 minus 10 is 11, and 22 minus 10 is 12. I know that the 10 is the number of protons because that's the atomic number, and I know this is the number of neutrons because that is the atomic mass minus the atomic number, and that gives me the number of neutrons. So all of these are neon because they have 10 protons but they are isotopes of each other because they differ in the number of neutrons. And they're still all neon and they still all exist in nature. And so this is just a little graphic saying what I just said and showing you how you do the chemical symbol and how uh, that atomic number and atomic mass are written, okay? Um, you can write these like we just did. You could write it as any 20, 10, like that. Or you could write it as Ne-20 or Neon-20. And that's the same thing because I know that it's got a 10 for an atomic number or it wouldn't be Neon. So I don't necessarily have to write that unless, you know, the teacher asks you to. And so you could write it this way in shorthand, neon 20, neon 21, okay? And you would know, okay, that's got 10 protons, so the neon 21 would have 11 neutrons. So these things vary, these isotopes vary by the number of neutrons that they have. And we already said that, that in neon, they all have 10 protons. They have 10, 11, or 12 neutrons, and so their atomic mass number is 20, 21, and 22. But some occur more often in nature than others. So when we're trying to figure out what the average mass is, we have to take into account what we call the natural abundance. That is, how much do they occur in nature? Because if you look in the case of neon, neon 20 
is about 90% of all of the natural neon that occurs on the earth whereas neon 22 is about 9% neon 21 is not much at all so it doesn't really contribute now if they were all um, you know 33 33 34 percent okay which would equal 100 percent just like this equals 100 percent then I could just add them up and divide by three but since they have different abundances, I have to do what's called a weighted average. And you probably have experienced weighted averages, whether you know it or not, because a lot of people grade that way. And so what they do is they take the um, abundance times the, the weight or mass and then add those up and get your average mass of all of the isotopes. And so this is how you write it all crazy, okay? Um, this reads as the sum of all n times the, is the fraction of an isotope n times the mass of the isotope, okay? And so then you do the fraction of each of those, the fraction times the mass, the fraction times the mass, on and on depending on how many isotopes you have and then you just add them together and get what we call the weighted average and you don't have to divide by anything because you're really already taking that into account when you multiply it by the fraction so for example naturally occurring chlorine consists of 75.77 percent chlorine 35 atoms so its mass is 34.97 and 24.23% chlorine, 37, which has a mass of 36.97, calculate chlorine's atomic mass. So it has two isotopes. It is 75.77% of one and 24.23% of the other. So I'm going to do the atomic mass, the average atomic mass by doing the weighted average of this. Okay, so when I look at the number 75.77%, what is that really as far as a number goes? It's 75.77 out of 100, right? And then times 100 tells me the percent. If I don't multiply it by 100 to get the percent, then this is 0 0.7577 and that's called the fraction and if you multiply the fraction by the AMUs you're going to get how much that contributes to the weighted average okay I'll show you what I'm talking about so you might be sitting there thinking well if it's chlorine 35 why is the mass only 34.97 AMUs our mass spectrophotometers are only accurate to um, the hundredth place. So we have a little bit of difference. We know that it can't be a partial neutron, okay? So and we're looking at whole numbers, so it's 35. But what we don't know is, is the atomic world have the same numbering system we do? So what we do is we make it match our world as long as it still explains what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to use the AMUs that we did with the mass spectrophotometer. So what I have is I have 34.97 AMUs from the chlorine 35. And I'm going to multiply that by the, mat, the fraction, which is times 0 0.7577. Now, if you want to write this there that's fine it's the same number okay but it's seven seventy five point seven seven so every hundred grams of chlorine you're going to have seventy five point seven seven grams of it. it's going to be chlorine 35 all right and then you're going to multiply that out and then for chlorine 37 which is the other isotope it's 36.97 amu times 0.24 two three which is the percent fraction of that one so then once you've done that all you have to do is you multiply those and you can leave all the significant figures you want to 26.497 and 8.958 
and then I'm going to add those two numbers together and come up with 35.45 and I'm using four significant figures because I had four in those AMU numbers and that's what I measured okay percent is, is a calculation measurement was the AMUs the mass all right and so 35.45 AMUs is the average and if you look on your periodic table you're probably going to see 35.45 AMUs so that's how we come up with those numbers it's not a straight um, average because if it was then I would add those two together and I'd get 35.97 right that would be a straight average but I can't do a straight average because it's not 50 50 if it was 50 percent of each then I could do that but if when it's not then I have to take into account the abundance so here are you some more practices for those so that you can do it um, and keep in mind the way this printed I think I fixed it on yours but I'm not sure the the atomic number is always the small one right so that's really chromium 50 24 right 52 24 53 24 54 24 etc okay so that's that's just it the computer fonts didn't like what I was doing okay all right and that's it for isotopes and weighted average